is Joe Rogan's testosterone replacement regimen with human growth hormone going to end up hurting him? Joe has mentioned that he's been on testosterone for years openly in different articles and podcasts on his own show. And he's also mentioned that he's on growth hormone. And Joe's 53 years old. He's been on testosterone since his late 30s. This is incredible stuff. Another amazing celebrity that's transparent about his PEDs. In addition to these PEDs, because Joe's not competing anymore, right? M mixed martial art guy. He is enjoying life. And that's what this is about. This is about enjoying life and using some of these agents if you need them. And what's the downside? What are the complications? Joe, this is for you and this is for millions of men that are going to enjoy being on testosterone, not to mention growth hormone, not to mention some of the other drugs, but psychedelics and all this great. Joe's a funky guy, man, and that's awesome, super spiritual guy, and I encourage you guys to be spiritual. But I definitely don't encourage you to do all these drugs, but it is what it is. This is a time of openness and transparency, and that's why I'm here. With this said, let's go right into Joe's dose. Now, I don't know his dose, and he's not a patient of mine, but I'll bet you, and I've seen some podcasts with Joe, that he says that he's probably on a very small dose, micro-dosing. So Joe's doing it right, right? He's taking he's taking a low dose. He's taking, it seems like, testosterone cypionate, because he's in America, right? It's dosed at 200 milligrams per mil. He's taking 0.1 or 0.15 maybe 0.2 every three days. I think I, he said that. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I looked for where I could find information about like his exact dose, and I really couldn't find the exact dose. But I'm busy, and I certainly can't spend hours on the internet finding it, so I think I found enough. Help me out here, though. But let's, let's look at it, though. It's about 20 to 30 milligrams of intermuscular testosterone every couple of days, you know? And that's probably what he's on, because it takes the, the peaks and troughs off. On one interview where he was responding to a, an expert talking about testosterone optimization and different things, he mentioned that doctors make a big mistake if they give that big dose bolus every two weeks to a month. Now, and I, of course, everyone agrees with that. But isn't it amazing that there are doctors that are so busy and they just don't know this world that they're giving that bolus dose every two weeks to a month and guys are going up and down. They don't feel good. Talk about the side effects with estrogen and all this, but they can get hurt because imagine what's going to happen to your blood pressure. Imagine, imagine the edema. Imagine what's happening when you can give soft little tiny doses, more physiologic. So that's a very important piece right here. Now, my recommendations, and I've said it before, I've been on this for, boy, coming up on 30 years, Joe. Quick pause a second. If you're watching this video, chances are you're on testosterone or maybe even steroids and you're concerned for hair loss. So am I. So what's going on is that testosterone from your testicles, naturally, or from exogenous testosterone and injections, even steroids, can make you feel phenomenal and great, but it definitely can lead to male pattern balding. A lot of genetics on this, guys. There's a lot of other factors involved, but DHT, the conversion of testosterone to DHT, is absolutely fundamental. Now, I don't like, you guys know, I don't like the systemic DHT blockers like finasteride and or dutasteride because they cause sexual symptoms, not on all men and not even on men that are just on these medications alone, but even for men that are on testosterone and steroids. The brain, guys, the sexual center stimulated by antigens is incredible, and I love it, and I know you guys love it too. So, my number one recommendation is going to be shampoos. You got to see the link here. There's two products, shampoos and topical agents. These products I'm recommending, in my opinion, are the absolute best combinations of ketoconazole with other specific agents for the shampoo and alternatives to minoxidil. You got to see these products. Check the first product lines 
for the shampoo and the topical application. I'm gonna watch this in myself, guys, and I've heard this stuff is absolutely amazing for my patients firsthand. So thank you so much for trusting me with this, guys. You gotta keep the hair strong and healthy. Coming up on 30 years, Joe, is about 0.4 to 0.5 every four to five days of a concentration of an ester of sipinate or an anthate that is 200 milligrams per mil. Or if you're sussing on 250, it's 250, maybe 0.4. And again, every five to six days. This is a perfect dose because you know what, Joe? I don't want to be injecting every three days because after 20 or 30 years, you get tired and you just forget the injections. I think a lot of you guys can agree with me on this dose regimen that in the beginning, yeah, you get into it. You want a micro dose. You want to do it every day, maybe 0.1 every day, two or three days. You look forward to it. You got everything set up in your house and you're really set up and you're just so excited and you enjoy it. This is amazing. But after years, do you really want to inject every day, even two or three days? A lot of guys just inject maybe 100 milligrams or 120 or so every week, you know, so it's a regular same day, like every Sunday or something. A lot of my patients, a lot of you guys do that. So, and that's okay. It goes up and down, but do you really feel a difference? And is it really bad for you? It's man per man. But taking 200 a week from an anti-aging place, you know, it's going to be too much, guys, for I would say 90 five percent of men so this is a big piece for me to use joe as an example right he's on these doses most likely these small micro doses next what are the recommendations do i have regarding testosterone itself does he use ancillary drugs like aromatase inhibitors and or human chorionic gonadotropin so the ais are going to block the estrogen now the whole theory with the microdosing is that you're not giving a bolus of a testosterone ester, and therefore, theoretically, it will not aromatize. It's brilliant, guys. You've got to understand this. That's the reason for doing it. It gives a more sustainable physiologic uh, means of delivery into your body, kind of like your testicles, but it's not like endogenous testosterone, guys. The free testosterone is going to be much higher, but most guys love it because the brain loves it. But testicles will shut off. Estrogen conversion will happen. Don't hate on estrogen, guys. Most men feel great with a little upper limit normal of ultra-sensitive estradiol, just over that upper limit normal, maybe into the high 30s or maybe 40s. Guys feel phenomenal. You block that down even subtly to get that number perfect on paper, boom, guys feel flat. Sex drive goes away. It just is amazing to me. It's so sensitive, those neurotransmitters. So focus on that. Next. Joe's 53. Does he, he has children. Does he really want to maintain his testicle size? Is it a cosmetic thing? Does HCG small doses with testosterone, like 250 to 400 a couple times a week, is it going to work? Is there down regulation? Is there more estrogen production? Guys, I'm giving all this to you. You got to keep following me on this stuff. If you're on testosterone, you got to follow this. Okay, this is just the testosterone delivery. Now, Let's go into the health concerns, all right? This is where I shine, and Joe, if you're watching this, brother, I assume you have it. Joe is an incredible guy. Joe's got a lot of resources, right? Joe's not the average guy. Joe makes a couple of dollars, which is awesome. Does Joe have all this done? Let's go into it. And if he doesn't, I've, I've, I've met men that are worth a billion dollars and they haven't had this stuff done. I'm humble for this. And I have guys that are just regular working Joes, and they have much better monitoring and care because they care. This is, I want to do this for you guys. So health outcomes, you got to start with the heart. You got to look at the blood pressure. Guys, I've said it over and over, but please understand my redundancy. Blood pressure, heart rate, lipids. Get the calcium score to see if you have any plaque in the artery based on your family history and your cholesterol, blood pressure, the whole nine yards. Not to mention with Joe, he's using some of those amphetamines, he says, because he uses them, right? They're used. And does that increase the heart rate and does that put stress on the heart? The studies and the risk, it's got a warning on it. Okay, new vigil on some of these drugs that he said that he uses in the past. And if you use them regularly, they can be addictive because they're amphetamines, number one. Number two, is it going to be risky for the heart with the heart rate, with the stress on the heart, hypertension? Guys, 
it's got a warning on it. It's true. It's not just the Fed say, shoving it down your throat. I don't use those meds, and I have ADD, as you can see, but I'm focused now, guys, because I'm spiritual. I don't use them because I'm such a, I'm such kind of like a hypochondriac with my heart, which is turning out to be a great thing as I'm pushing up towards 60 pretty soon. Boom. So I hammer on this, and I use the chemistries, which I'm giving now to you guys openly, and I think it's the right thing to do. And but you got to have your own doctor to apply it, though. You got to find a smart internal medicine doctor or an APRN or someone that can do it and be safe and monitored. So, will these drugs come together and collide? Will they affect your heart? And that's the number one thing. So, you got to get the calcium score, you got to get the echocardiogram. Joe, do you have a left ventricle that's slightly enlarged? Joe, you've been on androgens for years, not much. But is your LV function normal? Do you have the beginning of diastolic dysfunction? Guys, just a 53-year-old guy in the street that's otherwise healthy can have all this stuff because he's getting older. Okay, next, hemoglobin A1C. That's the prediabetes. That's the diabetes and the glucose. You really got to look at that. Next, the heart. Go down into the prostate now. Now, what's the data on the prostate? You're on testosterone, not to mention growth hormone. This is really going to be interesting synergy for setting up something with potential growth. Growth, growth hormone, growth of this, getting ripped because it does take off body fat. Maybe collagen gets better in the skin. Maybe the brain feels better in thinking. Is it going to grow a malignancy? Talk about the prostate. Thank God. There's no data to support that men on TRT have an increased uptick in prostate cancer. If your doctor says that, he's wrong and he's not reading the data. He needs to be moved to the side. If you have prostate cancer and you start testosterone, be it if you're young, you probably don't. It's super rare. But if you're 40s, 50s, 60s and older, your chance for having malignancy silently exists and if you give it testosterone, it can grow. What do you do? You got to get those PSAs, prostate specific antigen. You got to get digital rectal examination. Everyone knows I can't do it because my hand is numb and I'm not putting a numb finger in a man's rear end digital rectal examination. So I make sure I coordinate with good doctors, usually urologists. If you want to get a digital rectal exam, get it done by an expert. It's called a urologist. They're the absolute, no one has a better finger than a urologist. Next piece regarding the prostate is you're going to want to keep the doses down because if you take too much testosterone, I can tell you, you can get something called BPH, by non-prostatic hyperplasia, where the prostate can get swollen and enlarged. And it might not be cancerous, but it can cause urinary tract infections, obstruction, and it can be a real nuisance and cause erectile dysfunction. In the future, you're going to see more doctors and more patients that are aware are going to utilize MRIs. Like women have much more modalities for breasts. They have ultrasounds, MRIs, right? We don't have that for the prostate. That's coming out, okay, guys? That's an early tip here, MRIs. Don't, don't just order an MRI of your prostate and pelvis now unless a real doctor like a urologist wants to have that done. Next, protective medications, Joe. What can you use that's protective? Let's talk about it. So go back to the vital signs. Go back to the blood pressure, the heart rate, the lipid, the hemoglobin A1C. I love the ACE and ARB. I love Bistolic. I have so many videos on this. My vital signs are that of an infant. My cholesterol is that of a newborn baby, and that's important to me. My heart rate's in the 50s. Actually, children have higher heart rates, so exclude the heart rate. Blood pressure is perfect, and that's what's important, guys. Now, how should you do this? Let's keep going. Also, with statins, there's going to be alternative dose regimens. Don't take it every day, potentially, but a lot of people can take it every day, and it's okay to take it every day. I elect not to. I take it every other day. Doses like Crestor, drugs like Crestor, Robostatin, and Atorvastatin. Simistatin's poison, so stay away from that. It's definitely going to be muscle toxic potentially. So you want to stay on the less muscle toxic drugs. Next, you want to look at things and drugs if you have any coronary disease like PCSK9s because you can use less statin, Repatha, great drug. 
Vasipa. This is a pharmaceutical grade fish oil product, guys. It's freakish, the data on this. I've been on it for years. I feel like an absolute freight train. I want to train so hard, I have to be careful because I'll just tear off and shear muscles off the bone. And that's just, I've already done it already. So that's how incredible this is. Next, Joe, you're 53. You are, you're in great shape, Joe, but you're, you're not super skinny guy and you may have pre-diabetes. Half the country has pre-diabetes. You can't tell just by looking at someone. Metformin, you're on growth hormone, Joe. Potential for cancer over years. So metformin is not only a medication that provides protection on the vascular endothelial tissue, no one's going to argue this, apart from, from the protection, the, the, the glycemic protection, but it's been shown in studies to be protective against cancer. That's why I take it, and that's why I'm here telling you guys the truth. Now, I want sound physicians to hear this. We have no gold standard data on this. But we have a lot of data on this that it's safe. And for a lot of people, it's going to be very important for them to be on this medication for the fact that they're pre-diabetic alone. And that's evidence-based data. So I want you guys to pay attention to this. But the fact that you're getting older, maybe you're on a drug like growth hormone because you love the effect of it. Is it going to grow a cancer, a malignancy in the colon, on the skin? or maybe the prostate. Guys, I'm here for you. In summary, don't do testosterone unless you need it, but testosterone can be a wonder of the world, and Joe obviously loves it, so take it and be guided and monitored. Use the Anabolic Doc app for guidance with your own physicians. Understand that you should take the lowest effective dose. There's no question about that. Monitor your heart and your prostate. In addition to that, I want you guys to get skin screens and colonoscopies, 45 to 50, if it fits for you. That's for every person in the world, but you need to take this to a discussion to a good primary care doctor. And in the end of the day, diet, exercise, good supplements, and spiritual, spiritual attention, and a phenomenal attitude to your spiritualism that Joe has is gonna kick ass and make sure that you live a strong and healthy life for as long as you possibly can and that's why i'm here guys thank you so much